sweating guys. I'm back at my swim, which has altered. Massive willow trees gone down, I think, right in it. And, uh, the river's up a bit. I've had to get my waders on early to get all the way down here before I obviously go wady. So I'm in, as you can see, the middle of nowhere. But it, it's going through nice, it looks clear, it looks good. If I could pick a couple of three fish up during the day, I'd be happy. I'm obviously not going to get what I got previous trips. I just can't get the, the trees right the trees right where the swim is, to be honest. Could have moved the fish out? Who knows? Yeah. I brought my tablecloth with me. That's the last hand white rag I've got. It's almost too good to use. That is so in the swim, it's ridiculous. I've mixed up a bit of leftover ground bait and I've made a big, big mistake. I'll put pellets in with it. I bought two tubs. What I do is I keep my my ground bait. I normally keep brown in one, Bailey's number one feed in the other. And like a ninny, I picked up two brown. That's totally useless in a swim feed. Absolutely totally, totally useless. I've got some bread there. I can mush up with that soft as well. And this is a fast-paced swim. That's why I've come here. The chute, which I fished before, is no longer a chute because the tree's in it. So I fear if I get couple of three fish if I can even fish it I don't know I've taken a pretty huge gamble lugging all that to push all my trolley through the water to get to this area anybody using lunch and meat I just put the tins in the bottom of your trolley I take them back don't it? I know I still see them about on fisheries it's a shame really anything you bring with you look I've got a plastic bag there so when I finished with my bait or whatever in there, which will probably be today. I can put my rubbish in there for now. It'll go just in here. Neat and tidy. Okay, I'm using a bait apron. Going to try and wade out there the best I can. I'm probably going to put a bit of ground bait in this bottom one. Spare hook up here. Um, using white gate hooks. Avon rod. Usual. What's new here? What's new? Absolutely nothing. This is the legendary reel that drops off the water, off the uh, rod back into the water. Six pound line. I do not speak with forked tongue. I'm rolling meat. There's a treble A shot there, a large hook there. That's all I need. Barbless. <clears throat> right, let's cut some meat up and give it a go. I bought about six cans of meat because I'm obviously going to go for it but I did envisage falling back on feeder and that's stuff now I've got the pellets just cut this up like this so I'm getting about a dozen baits out of one slice I just edged the tin out of out of there and then just go across the top of the tin like this. Put it in there guys, because if I'm not unlikely to get a dog up here, middle of nowhere. Mind you, I saw the swim I came through to get here. There was nobody there and it's a dog eating his lunch and meat, so. Now, there's enough there to tell me if I'm gonna get any fish or not. Beautiful, beautiful. Early, it's early autumn or late autumn. October's around the corner, so I suppose it's early autumn. Look at the trees, <clears throat> just starting to turn. Water's beautiful and clear. Now, I know a lot of guys on the River Wye here like it coloured. When it's low like this, I don't have a problem with it. I like, uh, I've done a lot on the Hampshire Raven. A lot of clear water fishing, and that's why I think the rolling meat might be the way to go. I don't know, I'm looking for anything. If you come up here, this is just a day ticket. It's not some secret squirrel bit, you know, where you've got to be friends with everybody and do all that gravy training business. No, I'm not. It's a day ticket water. It's Hereford and District, virtually in, just outside the, the city there. Is it town or city, Hereford? Um, go into Woody's Tackle Shop. Woody is the man. Now, I'm not some river wide expert. In fact, I'm new to it. I've only been coming up here the last three years or something like that. Four years, maybe. Just have the odd trip or two up here. 
seem to have got it nailed down a little bit more now. And it's once you know the swims, you've got to go and see Woody in his tackle shop. Well, A for a ticket, B, bait, and C, he sets you up with the gear and he'll tell you what the conditions are like because this thing can come up and down, uh, you know, quite a lot. So you need to get checked out with Woody. Or you can go on the EA agency and um, they'll show you a graph, you know, on the river levels. But you've got to, it comes down in a bulge from the mountains. I've tried to track it and I can't work it out. So I'm going to take a little bit of ground bait in this pouch. They might want drawing out. I see there's another guy who's obviously seen our films. He's wading up there. It happens. He's out there phoning his mate saying, I know where Graham's fishing. Well, no secret. No secret. Oh. Yeah, he's rolling meat, so it's good really that people actually do um, follow the procedures and try it. Polarising glasses. Uh, net's there for if I want it. Let's tentatively venture out. I'd better clip these up because I do tend to. Waders aren't expensive and they open up access to a lot of different swims on rivers. I don't see people doing it now so much. What a, what a setting. See, it's whizzing through here. So it's unlikely to get, <coughs> unlikely to get fish in there. But just be very careful when you go out. The stones are slippery. I'm probably gonna go in today, I've got that sort of feeling. These will probably go whistling through, but it doesn't matter. It's going to, going to hopefully break up. And I might just be able to clip the inside of that. Just need to come up a bit, a little bit higher. I'm going to try and feed. I'm sure the fish are at the back, but I'm going to try and feed this side of it and try and pull the fish out on the edge of those bubbles there. I cannot believe one good swim I found in 50 years and a bloody tree falls in it. Hoping the camera doesn't fall off. So same story, I'm going through slightly on one side there, and the hook's just on the outside. First cast to see if I get snagged up in those branches. There's a slight upstream, very, very slight upstream wind, which is dead handy. And I can watch that bow in the line there as well. So I'm just about on the bottom there. I've noticed here a lot of time, the barb will do feed. They feed in the sort of late afternoon as a bite. Chub. The first run down, I'll let it go a little bit farther than I would do normally just so I can lay the line on the spool there a bit better. I touch ledger across my finger. Okay, here we come. Well, I just had a sandwich, flask of tea, nothing in that swim. So that is, uh, look where the flood comes, guys, here. Look at that, that's a recent one. So I'm gonna go downstream, because that tree is definitely queer, that swim up, I can't believe it. I had a fantastic session there, so if I don't have that type of fishing I had early on there, well, again, well, it's the way it is. I'm just wondering if they've been pushed downstream or if there's another drop off over there. There's another willow over there. So I'm going right down here. Then I'll wander out and see if there's a little bit of a gully or something over there. Slightly deeper area. See, they're much deeper here for the distance I am from the bank, but much deeper. 
drops off there. I'm not saying there's fish there, I'm just saying it's deeper here. It was up there where I was, the shallows came out more and that pushed over to where I call that chute, where it goes right down and the chute's gone. There's a tree in it, there is no more chute. So I'm going to be pushed to get out there. I think I just got to heave some bait out and hope. See if there's anything in the middle of that. I haven't had a chub, but I've maybe I have one, one bang. That's about all I've had. And there is another swim downstream. I do reach and fish off the bank. <clears throat> I may well have to go and do that and, and scrub the wading all together. There's, there's plenty of anglers down here, so traditional swims will be gone, I dare say. One fish can turn it around, people. With the day, I've lost me, lost me bait now. With the daylight today, you really can't grumble. You're in waders, just running a piece of meat through, easy fishing. Well, it's easy, I'm not catching anything. <clears throat> now I could lose gear here, who knows? First run through, shallow on the far side, it's already caught. I like it, just bump, 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 bump. That's what I'd ideally like, yes. It's not too fast, not too slow. And I'd like, I'd, it sounds ridiculous when you're barbell fishing. I wouldn't mind getting a chub bite, a couple of bangs, just to let me know there's fish there. As it goes down, I'm trying to trot it on the bottom, I'm just opening and closing the pale arm. Lines across my fingers here. I didn't see any flashing up on that other swim either. Sometimes you see them flashing. A reasonable run through there actually. Couldn't really fish it from the bank though. It's deep all the way around there, I can feel it, feel it uh, and see the angle of the line. Oh, missed one. Oh, look at this, straight on the tree. Okay, that was a bite. That was definitely, could have been a chub I would say, but I feel happier getting a bite. A fish will turn the day around. Right, that's what I've been wondering had they moved downstream with that tree going in the water. That was a def definite bite. To be honest, because I've been going like 40 minutes and no bites. Caught me on the hop. No snags, please no snags. I had a good run through then. Just want it, I like watching the, it's out from this bottom. I just like uh, watching that bow in the line as well. It's difficult to, all the years I've been writing, it's difficult, you can't t teach somebody by writing. You have to be there teaching them visually and letting them feel and bump their way along the the riverbed and then they know what the bite's like, that type of thing. I'll watch the tree on a strike because it's a long way down now. That was definitely a, a bite down there. I want to see the line just going like this slowly round. I know it's swinging but not too fast. Let's keep trying. Just that one initial, I feel a chub bite. Look, they might not be on rolling meat. It might have to be a static bait with pellets and a feeder. Well, quite a good run through there, doesn't feel too snaggy. We don't, you know, it should be fish there, but. One fish turns the day around. Try and. Get over the far side there. There's another big landslide over there and a tree's gone down. No. Most peculiar, very, very dead at the moment. Thinking of going to get a, a swim on a slower stretch and just sit there with a the feeder and quiver tip rod and some pellets. The trouble is when you caught fish on a particular method, it's very difficult to move from that method 
when you go the next time, even though all the conditions have changed. It's been a while. I've taken the shot off and I've run the meat through. Just loose, just loose, seeing if I can get further downstream, because I'm on the limit here, but I'm hooked up to a fish. It has been some time coming, I assure you, it's just about to move, but it is a fish. I'm guessing it's a chub, purely because I was freelining it. I'm grateful for it. It's a fish. Here he comes. Yeah, I've had a couple of bumps and they're definitely not feeding properly. Look at me pulling that current. Oh, not a bad old fly from a chub. A lot of it's a current, obviously. Well, well, well. Maybe it just takes a while for him to get feeding. Maybe I should wait. It's easy and back. He pings off, he pings off. He's not going to ping off. Here he comes, here he comes. That's the one thing we're waiting. Uh, oh, that's a nice chub. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's not a bad chub. Not a bad chub at all, that one. Well, there you go, people. Look at that. River wide chub. Back he goes. Oh, whole result. Save the blank. Got the skunk out the boat, as they say. Now, just that subtle change, perhaps I could just be lucky. Off. Ooh, I, just, I want to get that shadow line. You can see I'm just short of it there. I'd like to get in that shadow line. There's no deeper over there. In fact, I think it's shallower. But it's so bright. I'm just kind of wondering if they're doing that. I can't get out any farther. Look, I'm up to the limit now. Well. Took a while to come. Right, let's see if there's any others. Trouble is, with touch ledger, you need a couple of bites to sort of get used to the to the bump they give you. It's sort of a subtle art. It's a dark art. That's what they say it is. Just got to get that speed. It's got to go down at the same speed as the loose feed. There's two ways of fishing. You either put a big big weight on, big lead, and you anchor the meat on the bottom and let them come to you, or you do what I'm doing and you go to them. I just like the you go to them way of fishing, especially in, under these conditions. We well, give it a dozen casts here, and I still will move if I don't get another take. To be honest, I'm grateful. See how much farther I can, as you get farther back, it's like boat fishing, that lead, that treble A shot will bounce on the bottom and it won't go any further. Whereas this way, just free lining totally, I can just raise the rod top like this. I just lift the rod top, it lifts the meat off the bottom, the current affects it and just lifts it a little bit farther down. But you have to be in and out of, I'm going to call it gear really, and you're waiting for that bump. So they're not exactly going to run off with it like a pipe with a dead bait. I'm on again guys. That's another chub, I'd say, almost certainly. Just getting ready to move, so. Up from that willow all the way down, I tried. It's not down the back here, and I can't get any farther down. It's not such a big chub, this one. It's still a chub. Fish is a fish. Small one. You can't believe the size of lunch I'm he's taken. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. <laughs> he barely got that in his mouth. Away you go, pal. Calls for another cast, I feel. Uh, oh, here you go. This is this is direction from the uh, fisheries to where the fish are. That's a bit like today's fish, isn't it? Look, arrows all over the place. Socially distanced fish is what I've got. I better leave that sign there. Might be there for a reason. That is today's fishing all over the place. What a day. What a day, look at this. Look how clear the water is. Not much weed in though. This bit's a bit hazardous around here. Just made it, go slowly. Always go slowly upstream because it's going to push up over the top of your waders. Well, I'm on again, boys, I've moved upstream well out in the middle of the river here. 
I sort of thought there was a bit of a channel running through this fast. And I've actually, I'm guessing, got a chub hooked up. If you want to know what the bite was, <laughs> I didn't even see it. It's a big belly of line. It's not a very big fish. But listen, I'll take anything at this stage. It's been very, very slow for me. Maybe I should have gone on the pellet in the feeder and uh, not gone straight on the meat. And I should have built the, built the swim up a bit. But I'm not getting a lot of bangs from the chub, and that's kind of, kind of worrying. Why is nothing feeding? Yes, a chub. Here he comes. In you come. Here he comes. Just took nicely. There we go, a nice chub. That's a benefit of wading. You don't need any mats or anything, you're just in the water. Mint fish there, as you would expect from the Y. Bye. I've moved a couple of three swims, guys. It's about the third swim. But I'm probably spending too much time in them. And I should be going on the pellet feeder somewhere in a deeper area. But you know what it's like, as soon as you hook one fish, you're up for hooking another, so it's difficult to uh, pack up cast and you just think one more, one more, one more. The next cast, the next cast is a barbel, the next cast is a barbel. They're a species of driving nuts. I don't know, I didn't feel that bite or I didn't, I don't care. I'll take anything at a stage. Three chub. It must have been right down the back there somewhere. And I haven't put a lot of feed in. Strange, I thought they'd be going nuts today, I've got to be honest. And the old saying is that's why we call it fishing and not catching. Fancy the edge of that tree, but I can see some weed there as well. I need to get just the back of the stream of weed. Well, just as well I've got two two sessions here. I'm gonna stay in a B and B tonight and have a have a go in here tomorrow. I don't quite know where I'm gonna go though. It looks like I might have to aim for chub. Well, I just had one, uh, one chub there, guys, so I'm going to move off again. Can't understand there. I'm not getting the bites from the chub. I can understand the barbel. I mean, I've been on the Avon, clear water in the summer. I've run a piece of lunch of meat through barbel. They just spread apart the shell, go back together, let they go through. If they're not feeding, they're not feeding. <clears throat> but I'm kind of curious as to why the chub aren't. There's not even a huge amount of minnows in the shallows here. So. It's like everything's gone on lockdown. Even the fish. <laughs> that was close. Well, absolutely nothing's happening. It's baking hot. I've had my top off sunbathing. <clears throat> I'm back to the original swim here. I'm going to call it Snag City because it's a very snaggy swim here. It's just so dead, it's ridiculous. And another uh, angler, young lad, just, well, got about 25, just come up. He's come from Cardiff. He's come on the train to fish the Wyatt. It shows you the sort of power this river has with the reputation. <clears throat> Excuse me. And he said it's just, he's got hemp and cast and it's absolutely dead up there, he said. Yeah, a few small chub, um, early, early doors. Don't forget I didn't start till late, just before lunchtime. I guess he's been there early. Uh, but hemp and casters, for those of you who don't know, a little small chrysalis casters are chrysalis of a fly, house fly, blue bottle, whatever. And uh, the hemp is a hemp seed, which you boil up, it goes black with a white split in it. And you, you can feed that in and uh, it gets them going. So you use the hemp seed for feed and you use the cast on the hook. It's more a late autumn, early winter, winter bait, I would suggest. It's normally very, very good for catching fish productivity. As he said he doesn't really want the barb, he wants to catch fish. And it's just dead as a doorn out up there. Uh, I'm sitting here looking at my rod's boat over up there, which hopefully the canoeists, if they're coming down, won't crash into. A lot less canoeists. It's because all the kids go back to school, I'm guessing. But I'm now sitting in barbel position, which is not how I wanted to be fishing with two lumping great big feeders out there. Don't have the right ground, but I managed to salvage some with bran, some pellets, and a sack of mashed up bread I had. Yeah, there's canoeists coming down. They're not going to spook the fish because there's nothing there. I'm trying to have cast on the edge of that uh, shadow line over there where well, normally would drop, but if I've had two or three retrieves and I'm trying to get out there every 
five minutes, eight minutes, something like that, and I put both baits out together so there's plenty of food goes down. I'm just kind of disturbed about down there. The trees all gone in the bank. Stuff's all from over there. So they had a, a, a flood that was about 12 feet high, so it must have scoured it and changed it out. So maybe the fish have all moved. So tomorrow, if I'm going to stay overnight, which I've got to in a B&B, I don't know, I think I've got to go down to just go chub, float fishing for chub or something. I think the barb will have done, maybe. Basically, I'm just fishing for one fish at the moment to get me out of trouble. Once this sun goes down, I should get one, hopefully. Last, last knockings. Well guys, I've got to apologise for not being able to catch any fish today. It's so dead, it's unbelievable. I've now gone over to small cubes of lunch and meat, real small bits. I might have had one tap. Oh, I'm right over the far side, it's as far away from the sun as I can get at the moment on the water, because now it's going lower, the shadow line's actually getting smaller. But what I don't understand is why I'm a little concerned, is I'm not getting line bites, you know. The line bite happens when there's your swim feeders, the current's coming this way, fish works up and he starts feeding around, taking bits and pieces. If very, very chub or barb or decent sized fish will bump the line they just, and you'll get a false bite, it goes down and springs back. And at least that way you know there's fish in there and if you, if you get bumps and or fish and then it stops, well then you know there's nothing happening and there's nothing happening at the moment unfortunately. I've not had those line bites to know how much feed to put in the feeders. I'm giving them a good 15 minutes out there, to be honest, because I don't see what's eating them. Look, barbel fishing, these, well, one of these two could just crash over any minute, but going by the guy upstream, he's had uh, nothing either. I've had three chub all day. I will have one last go down there wading out and just running some meat round, but I think I've got to wait for the sun to go and just have one last throw. And of course, guys, yes, I'm going to have a cook-up. All is not lost. Just want one of these to whack over. I don't understand. Those rods are really, really pulling over. Whether it's because I'm way over the far side, there's more current on there, I don't know. But look, it's about as low as I've ever, ever seen it. So there can't be a lot of flow there, surely. The sun is just going behind that bush there. That puts me in shade here. <clears throat> but over there, you can see the light. It's all lit up over there. There's one little shady spot I can't even reach out now. So I figure the only way they're going to come out now is when the uh, sun does finally drop below the horizon. Or way behind the trees, probably 30 minute slot of getting a fish. And the other thing, normally when it's stale like this, what I call stale water low, you'd hear salmon splashing in that, you know, because they, they get stale, less oxygen in the water, they want to move, they want to go upstream uh, for spawning and that. Uh, I've not seen any splashes, I've not heard any uh, fish moving around, I've not seen any small fish rise, I've not seen brown trout coming up. It's just ominously, ominously quiet. Even the birds in the trees, even the birds in the trees, very, very, very quiet. Pleasant, but slightly weird. Well, people, I've thrown this piece of lunch of meat 
everywhere. I've not had a bump. So I think it's home time and I normally will hold on ground go through the jungle. I normally want to stay on till the last moment. And I think it's back to the B&B. And then uh, plan B. At the B&B. I suppose I better have a token couple of casts here. So you have bored always getting with no bites. I made myself a little weir here. I scooped it out of my wader so the little minnow's got somewhere to go. I've only got the whole river, Graham. All right, let's try again. Does not want to happen today. All right. And off my pack up early, guys, but it's been pretty biteless for a long number of hours. Going through perfect pace. Just tripping the bottom. I haven't had a sniff of a barbel, I've got to be honest. I've had about six or eight taps, and they converted three of those into a chub. And that's it. End of. Pleasant evening, but I didn't come for the evening, I came for the fish. Five casts ago. Well, back here in the B&B, guys. Watch the TV for the weather. Had a shower. But I still can't really think why that didn't fish. So tomorrow, today I was using big baits. So it's this microphone. <laughs> big baits for barbel. I wanted barbel and a chub. But a barbel generally will swing across. The river's coming to swing across. It'll pick the bait up. <clears throat> and it's, it'll move across. You get a good pull. A chub will pick it up and move a lot shorter distance, so you get more of a, a tap bite. I barely had eight 
takes from Chubb today, and they could have been pound and a half, or four pounds, five pounds, six pounds, who knows. But generally, you can nail those. So I'm a bit curious to the buy. So tomorrow I'm going to use small hooks, lighter line, possibly a very small feeder, trying to find an area and just feed it constantly like a matchman would do with small bits of lunch of meat and I might try the pellets. To start with though, I'm going to go in the supermarket on the way out tomorrow, get a couple of loaves of bread. I've got my chest waders with me. If I can find an area, I can run some ground bait down, what we call that slop that I make up, the ground bait that's just mushy bread and some bread flake on the hook. There is a place that Woody said oh, a couple of years ago to try, but of course it's a chub swim, but is it? The swims change every year, so I don't really know till I go down there. I think it's time for me to have early doors, um, go and grab the breakfast. Breakfast comes in a paper bag here with this COVID, can't believe it, can you? So guys, we'll see you in the morning and hopefully I can scratch a few fish out for you. Let's check that, check that news. It's not going to be good, is it? I hope this chair's safe. Right boys, back down, or renewed with enthusiasm. I'm underneath the railway bridge. That's not going to be quiet, is it? It's not going to be quiet. It's not going to be idyllic surroundings. But I fished here once before and I had a few small fish. <clears throat> and you can see the floods, look, they put that big tree, whole tree up there. I'm hoping there's nothing downstream. So there's a guy fishing down there, there's two guys up there, so basically I haven't got a lot of choice. I'm going to pound this with bait and I'm hoping to pick fish up back there. But listen, I'm going for like anything today, just anything to try and catch you people some fish. So, very small chub, might be some days, I don't know. But I'm going to put all yesterday's ground bait straight in now. So what I want to try and do is split the day into a couple of halves. Some pellets. I just fish, let's say, it's ten past nine in the morning, it's the earliest I've been here for a long time. Um, fish about three hours here, say till midday. If I catch fish, I can stay. If not, I'm going to go downstream and go wading. So let's get this stuff in. I don't understand yesterday, it was a funny day. It was a funny day. This is going to wake the guy up downstream. I can, you know, <laughs> bombardment coming, boys. Some of it will break up on impact, some will go down and sink to the uh, <coughs> riverbed. What you can do, I said it before, if you want it to sink straight away, push a stone in it like that. That will make a different bloop as well. <coughs> Sometimes it breaks up on impact, but generally it will get down a bit further. <coughs> Fishy Armageddon coming. So I'm going to mix up now my feeder ground bait. This be bran. These are pretty handy, these plastic tufts. I can just use and mix up what I want. Some good old Baileys. It's always worth putting a few pellets in, even if I don't use one on the hook, because they've got the oil in them. And that is giving us a bit of smell. I'm doing it 
all this before I tackle up. waste a good carp bait there. Look at it. Well, it's not the most scenic setting, <clears throat> but Woody did say some chub around here. I don't know the actual swim, whether it's upstream or downstream, but we tried downstream first. So we're going to be using yesterday's, well, let, let me show you. That was yesterday's luncheon meat there. That's, if you can see that, that's yesterday's luncheon meat. That's what I envisage using today. So what is that? It's about a bit less than a quarter of the size. And the reason being I want to use these instead of pellets is that I won't need to catch anything. So I feel luncheon meat is the anything bait. The hook is a size 10. Barbless. Put it in. Nick it. And a small feeder. All for beginners, like I said, you can see that there just slides. For me, that's quite short. Normally, if fishing fast water on the wire pellet, I'll go about five feet long between the hook plate here and the feeder link here. There, you see that? This is about 15 inches. I've made quite a sloppy mix because don't forget, I've already put plenty of bait out there. So I <clears throat> Almost don't need a feeder really. One's a bit short, we'll leave it. It's on the bottom. Bumped. Now, you're going to let this one fish. The other rod, believe it or not, I'm not going to fish a feeder. I'm going to fish um, just a link ledger there and a piece of meat on its own. This is going to echo. Ah, not too bad. Look. Look guys, look at this, look what a start. Mashed luncheon meat. Best best to put it right underneath where you're working. Want to keep that up nice and high. See what happens. So this one I'm gonna put a link ledger on. The last of the good weather days but they desperately need some rain to spark the river up and that's coming tomorrow and uh, the next day. The thing with the quiver tip rod is at my age it gets worse the nearer you get to the tip because the rings get smaller and smaller and smaller. Then what I do is look, I've mentioned it before but I'm going to mention it again for beginners. If you're fishing quite close range I'll peel a load of line off. Hope it doesn't go in bushes and thistles and stuff. And then just gently stroke the kinks out of it like this. You'll find it, it will cast a lot better. It'll straighten all the kinks out. And uh, if I want to use a very light shot almost free lining which I think I might you'll find it easier to go through these small rings of the uh, quiver tip when you cast it's on the floor don't walk all over it you can feel the kinks coming out of it and just carefully Look, see the kinks can you see the kinks there there and then when I wind that up to where I smoothed it, it's straight. Tip number one. Right, the other one I've got is just a treble A shot and the same small piece of luncheon meat. That cooing pigeon could drive me to distraction if he's going to be like that all day. He might get a catapult full of ground bait. Now it's not going to cast very far. Not far enough. But what I would envisage is that 
the groundbreak I've got, I threw in there, it will tumble up further downstream. Probably the chub will come on it first. So the one I'm going to bounce down, feeder stays at the top, I'm going to bounce down the back. I might even touch ledge, I'll see how I go. I think the barbel will more likely to lay down the back. Oh, just starting. Just starting. Was I where? Hang on, let me switch. Let me switch my camera off because I'm running. I feel so changed over, and I've got a running link ledger. Can you see that? With the bomb on the bottom, quite long, and the same small piece just to get out there. I've had <clears throat> one good bite on here, which I've missed, even though I've got the buzzer on. I'm just going to use this to roll around out there. Now, the annoying thing is I've got those trees in line with my quiver tip there. Could have done with it in the blue of the sky. You just see things better. Anyway, we see what this one does. Even that's bumping around, look, see? A couple of pull-down bites, but I just... I've lost two sets of gear as well. It's can't seem to find the honey pot where you can bump the feeder. Like that. And just put it down carefully. I think that that's in the clear. And I've had a couple of bangs on the uh, straight ledger. I've taken the link ledger off. That was it seemed to be snagging. And I've just gone for a double SSG shot and a small piece of meat. Can only try, guys. Can only try. I am sort of wondering whether I should try a float. Just wade out, or even just put a big float and run a float through there and see what's. What's on the bottom? I mean, the thing is, yesterday they weren't taking rolling meat, so why would they take a float, which was the same, it's sort of moving. Well, I'm sort of imagining that there is the average river height. You see where it's there? So it's about probably good two feet down, which means under normal conditions, I would probably be up to a neck in water. And I think that's a lot of the problem, why? Um, nobody seems to be catching much. Low water conditions. I'm kind of surprised that they're just not getting bites. Oh, there was one then, there was one then. Watch that rod, people. One bang. Got to be chub, I would think. That's what I'm getting, just one bang, and then they go. And we've got a 2-2 two -two for that cuckoo in chap up there. Yeah, you can see how the swim has changed. I found that yesterday. A massive tree there. I've lost a set of gear down here, so I'm assuming the branches come down there. So anybody fishing this, just be aware. It's under the water that you get snagged. We know not to cast in there, don't we? Guys, I'm on. Give me, give me a second to uh, get myself sorted. Wow, well, that came out in the middle of nowhere. It could be a chub, it could be a small barbel. I caught eels here before. I wonder if it's an eel. No, it's head shake. Chub, I'd say. It is indeed. Is that a trout? Chub. Wow. Only small, people, only small. Only small. Chub is a chub. That must have been those bangs I was getting on the rod. So there we go, people, with nice little river wide chub. Good condition. And that was on the feed with lunch and meat, so I'd better tough it out here a little bit longer. Holy cow. Oh, 
What the hell was that? 6.45 to Taunton. And one again, guys, this time on the uh, Link Ledger lunch and meet. I guess it's a chub. Where is he? He's down there, small chub again. Here he comes. Well, there he is, better than no chub. What I did do change, it was change over. I had a hook. Don't really know what it's used for. It was curved in a funny shape. I've gone for a wider cape. And maybe that did uh, make a difference. What I call a standard wide gape hook. Because when they're really, really picky like this, I, like, I would almost, if you can see where that's curved in, I'd almost like one straight. But I've run out of the ones that I have that are straight, so I've got to use this one. However, it did seem to result in a hook up, so. We'll try that one again. Oh, and the other thing I've done is extend the shot to about 18 inches. Let me, let me just get this out there, guys. Tangle time. The other reason was I think if the shot's here, the chub comes up, as soon as he picks up, he feels that tug of the shot might make him blow it out. If I extend it like there, he can pick it up, he can move around a lot more and give me a better pull on the rod. That's my th theory of the day. This one's got to go a bit farther downstream. I'm not happy where it is. Yeah, if I don't get any uh, better fish or more productive bites from this swim, then I will move down and I think I'm gonna, gonna try float fishing. I'm just going to, I'm just going to say something. This is not a swim for the faint hearted. I think I'm going to have to move guys. I've, I'm trying to cast farther and farther down the stream. We're not getting anything down there at all. A few little tentative bumps and bangs. So I'm going to pack up. Wind's starting to pick up, temperature's going to drop. I know the rain's coming, not today, tonight, I think. So um, I've got one more swim down there, and after that, I really don't know what to do. Maybe we'll get something on the float. Yeah, there was a swim up this way. I've done a film on it. I don't know if it's over there or not, but it's all altered so much that uh, it's a job to tell. I thought it's down there. There's a couple of guys fishing right next to me there. Well, I'm fishing right next to them. They were there first. I've run the meat through there, nothing. I've tried the back of that tree, nothing. I'm gonna go up the uh, fast water and try there. Give it a go. Leave my gear where it is and just go a bit of roving. It's that tough. Well, you can see how low it is. I was probably standing there when I made a film here before. Small weir there, bigger weir here. It's not, just a, it's not actually a weir, it's just a drop by the look of it. You call it a weir. And it seems to fall off just over the back there. So the problem being, this is so far shooting through here now, it's just picking me up. I've got a treble A shot there. Anything heavier I get snagged. Anything uh, lighter just gets washed away. So I'm sort of on the edge. I better chuck a handful or two of feed out there. I can only see my polarizing glasses. A sort of dark area over there which might be might be where a fish would hold up I'm using what I call my good ground bait but I don't want to throw it so far I can't reach the fish so we just work away here for a while pleasant enough with the weir in, in the background the running water I just want a running fish on the end rather than the running water Right, 
I have got waders. It's about right. I've got to let a bow develop in the line there until it gets picked up. And hopefully I can either see the tip up there, you guys might be able to see it, or I feed it over my fingers. There we go, it's picked me up already. Washing me downstream. And the wind's gradually, gradually picking up. You might hear it in the mic. You certainly get today's fishing trip out of it. But the fishing is unbelievably hard. Have not touched a barbel. Small chub hooked up here, guys. Just rolling some meat around. Wow. Here he comes. So he's got a mark there. I don't know if that's an otter, a heron. Or what? A pike. That's a nice looking chub, isn't it? It's that background. Average fish, but I think I might move up near that uh, Whirlpool. Well, it's just not happening, people, at all. The guys that were up by the railway bridge, when I was in the railway bridge, I was just downstream where they packed up and moved. I think they came down right next to me here. Swim feeders, piling in, nothing, nothing, nothing. So, I kind of lost, I'll go back to the railway bridge, do I look for another swim? Oh, no watch either, I think it's half past one. It's one of those days, it's hard to believe. The river's clear, it's very, very low obviously. But it's not, I don't understand why the chub aren't all over it. Barbell, I can understand a switch off low water, but it's where to go to find some fish. They obviously hold up somewhere and they're not in normal positions. Right, <clears throat> I'm gonna load this puppy up. And they're going to move again. Let it fall, hit the bottom. I'm just bumping it once and leaving it. Well, as you can gather, I've uh, given up fishing downstream and I've now come over here, back underneath my big green umbrella. I'm tempted to change that to a small hook as well. Look, 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 look. Missed him. I think I'm going to go with a small hook. Oh, I'll tell you what I've changed over to in a second. I've got a feeling this might be a little barn. No, it's an eel. There we go. Dare I put him in the net? Here he comes. And there we go. Small is gonna get me covered in slime. He find his own way back. There he goes. Running ledger, small swim feeder, a loop in the reel line, a length of a uh, thinner lit hook link there, very small size, 14 hook. But I've put a shot, a BB shot just here, so it slides down and hits the knot of the loop. 
So even if I want to cast farther, the shot won't slide down the line. <coughs> right, try again. Hopefully not dogs. So I'm using real mini pieces now, look. I mean, hopefully it's not going to be eel central. I might have to change because that was quite immediate, that uh, reaction. Oh, one again, boys. I'm wondering, is it the small hook? Is it the fact it's clouded over? Look, I don't care if I get a load of small fish. Well, just as long as they're not all eels. And it's a small chub. Well, not so small, just about under netting size, that one. Just under netting size. Yeah. He thinks it's funny. I'm just bumping it once. It's actually much better for seeing now against the background there, the white of the um, quiver tips, much better. So hopefully I can actually see the pull down bite and then lift into it. Oh, I've got some more chub on. Here comes the uh, here comes the eel police. And that's that person I've moaned at. Then their dog's going in the water. <laughs> He's phoned up and said there's a, there's a mad old age pensioner under the bridge. <laughs> Not far wrong actually. So I'm definitely getting more uh, more bites. I need smaller and smaller pieces actually. Right, let's see if we can get that same line. I'm hoping I'm sort of feeding a what I call a line now. Seem to get more bites on that uh, hook link. It's called Stroft. I don't even know if they still make it, but it's. Uh, I don't know where I'll put it now. I've got about three feet left, I think. Oh, I'm getting a few fish now. Oh, why did I say that? He's in the snag. Oh, he's out. I've got to feel it's an eel. When they go in a snag like that and come out again, generally, it's an eel. It's not a barbel, I don't think. It's an eel. Hey, like those small pieces of lunch on me. Come on. Some people like catching eels. I'm not wild about them, I have to say. But they give you a bite and a bit of action. And it's better than nothing, isn't it, guys? Well, unless they've swallowed the hook. Here he goes. I don't think I'll be giving this back to the wife, do you? If you do the tea towel. Yucky. Well, I've had three eels now. I'm getting plenty of these guys. So it's sort of turned right round. I feel that there's not going to be barbed wire. I don't like catching the eels, to be honest, because they... I've no problem catching them, obviously. But I just find, if the eels are getting to the bait, it generally means there's not much else going on. That's what I've found. And they come out moonlight nights, generally after a fresh run of rain, if you're fishing with worms, and when nothing else wants to feed, the eels come out. Listen, it's still something to catch. I know there's a lot of guys who like to catch an eel. Some people might never even have caught an eel before. I'm not one of those people that goes, oh, lucky them, if you know what I mean. Big eels, whole different ball game. At the moment, I seem to turn the day around. I've had about, oh, I had about, I had about six or eight of those chub. 
three eels and a load of bites, you know, bangs and that. So there it is, just like that. Swim feeder sliding up and down. Really small piece of lunch of meat on a, on a 14, can you believe? That's what they want. Kind of surprised on their dace. Normally you get dace on small bits of uh, meat. Do you know, I don't even know if I've, I've ever caught a, a, a wide dace. Well, it's not surprising. Normally, obviously, I'm always using uh, huge great big bits of lunch of meat or something. Why do you? They should take pellets, shouldn't they? I just got the feeling it might be the real deal. I just got the feeling it, is, it can't be a chub at this size. It can't be an eel. It's got to be a small barbel. Wouldn't that be nice just to finish with a barbel? Just to say I've caught one. It's a barbel. Oh, oh look at this little chappy go. You've got to love them, haven't you? Small as he is. A little perfect, still got that gold edge to him. Fin perfect. Let's get him off. Fancy catching a barbel right at the end. He blends in there. Well, I was pleased to catch that barbel, as small as it was. But I've only got big feeders left now. I've lost three feeders out there in the boulders or rocks or snags or whatever else is out there. And uh, I've got no more small feeders. Don't want to use my big feeders because I haven't got much feed. But what you can do, where I've got that, a link ledger set up now with an SSG shot. If it's a big shot like that, you can actually mould some ground bait around that lead and just throw it out and it gives you the same effect as a feeder. I'll show you what I mean. So there's my sliding link ledger. Here's my hook. There, there's the hook. There's my piece of lunch and meat. Now if you are free lining, <coughs> say for carp close in, you don't need to do this, but I take it out and just tap it round, right? Now there's my sort of double SSG size shot. There's nothing to stop you. Just pinching a ball of ground bait together like this. Just like this, done this so many times. Chub, <coughs> carp, tench. So that is effectively a swim feeder. It's gonna break up. There she goes. Boom, right in the swim. <coughs> Does sink a little bit slower, I find, than a swim feeder because it's got no weight on it. And we just put that one down. So there's a tip for you if you're running out of swim feeders. Just use a piece of ground bait, mould the ground bait ball around your link ledger shot. Well, getting through the ground bait, I don't think it's going to be too long before I call it quits. I'm not going to stay to dusk. I normally stay for dusk, so I can't be bothered, to be honest, guys. I think I'm going to have a little cook up with some food because I've got two and three quarter hour drive home and nowhere is open that I want to go into. Especially this COVID business. Just missed a couple of bites on there, boy. Got the luxury dinner there. On they go. So sure to get a bite now. Guys have got the weirdest fish on at the moment. Jumping all over the place. Watch that. Is that a dace? What is that? Oh, what? Wild brown trout. Lunch of meat. I've got that down as a wild brown trout, boys. A river wide, natural one. Goodness me. On lunch of meat. It's all come good in the end for me. Don't quite fit in the pan, does he? Doesn't quite fit in the pan. What a perfect little chappy. Let's hope he grows up to be about 10 pounds. There you go. Gone. We've got eels, chub, barbel, and now brown trout. I can't grumble, really, really, can I? I'm at least catching fish, and I'm probably, probably gonna get burnt ravioli, which is sort of par for the course for me. Got another fish on here. He went in the snag. I got him out. It's an eel. Look at that. I couldn't tie a fishing knot like that in a week. 
What a mess. Come on, off you come. Is he hooked in the tail? I'm not even sure he's hooked at all, guys. I don't think he's hooked. I think he's wrapped up in the line. If you have a look at him, look. He's trying to bite himself there. He's just tangled in that line somehow. Well, Dindins is served. Ravioli and Teflon. Well, I'm down to one rod. Snagged up again. Last knockings. Everybody else has packed up and gone. I'm the only idiot left here. No wonder it's been tough fishing, but I've done okay in the end, haven't I? I've done okay in the end. I've got to try and use ravioli at some stage for bait. I bet it's hot. Yeah, it's hot. Oh no. Oh no. Bloody what a place to fish, honestly. Shook me ravioli up. Well, that's it, guys. Got to call it quits. You can't say I don't give it to the last cast. Look, everything's, everything here is all packed away, all packed away. There's only the camera bag. <laughs> and I've, that's my rod rest, because I just keep... I've missed so many fish like that before, and I've also caught fish doing it like that. And I'm just literally wandering around trying to kill a minute or two, but you never know, that might be the minute it goes off. So... I doubt it will now. So thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Hit the subscribe button, both channels, TA Fishing and TA Outdoors. Don't forget the notification bell. I will see you in the next show. Fingers crossed. It's a bit easier than this one. And quieter. One was so loud. I heard something hit on the floor. Oh, it's there. Sorry, it's there. Hang on. <coughs> Not one of my fillings out.